today we're going to talk about the Wabi Sabi Tea Bowl. So I've already done my sketches and I have two different options for what I'm thinking about. The top option is going to be a little bit more wiggly, um, but still be a coil pot with a irregular rim and a foot ring. And then the bottom option, which is what I think I'm leaning towards, is uh, paddled on the sides, um, but very similar in approach. Um, so I wanted to first show you what I mean when I say a foot ring. So I have this mug that I've made and you can see that on the bottom, there is a little bit of a lift and that gives it lift when I set it down on the table. There's a feeling of elevation to it, which is very different from um, mugs that don't have that. For example, this mug here doesn't have uh, a foot ring. It has like a very um, firm presence on the table. It's, you know, really still and has a sense that it's not um, like elevated. Similarly, uh, this cup, which is made by uh, the artist Ayumi Hori, um, doesn't have a foot ring added to it. It's very simple on the bottom. Um, this one has a little bit of a foot ring, but it's subtle, but you can still see that it comes out and gives, gives the cup lift. And lastly, this one here um, has just kind of like an undercut, and this is similar to what we're gonna be going for. So this is a wood-fired mug. There is a foot ring that's on it. It gives it just a very subtle amount of lift, and it's just enough to cast a shadow underneath the piece. So that's what we're going to be going for um, as we develop our tea bowls and our concepts for tea bowls. Next up, we're gonna talk about how do we get started? All right, so let's begin. Um, I've got some clay here and I've got my cloth laid down on my table. Um, once again, if you're doing this in your home studio, if you've got an old t-shirt um, that you can use, anything that's gonna keep the clay from sticking to your table, because um, if it sticks to your table, it'll make it difficult to come up and then you'll ruin um, the piece that you're trying to roll out when you're trying to pick it up. All right, so I've got about a hand sized piece of clay here. Um, I know I'm probably not gonna need even half of it, but I'm gonna start off by just getting rid of any inconsistencies. And then I'm just gonna start by mashing it down quite a bit. Okay, if you're using something wooden, like a rolling pin, or you know, simple rolling pin, you can roll with the wood directly onto the clay. Um, however, if you are um, using something that's plastic to roll, you're probably gonna wanna put your uh, piece of clay in between two layers of the fabric uh, before you roll. Okay, I'm gonna mash this down just a little bit more with my hand before I begin. This is well wedged clay, so this clay has already been um, kneaded and made sure that there's no air pockets. You want a good quality piece there. All right, so then I'm just gonna roll it and I'm aiming for like about a finger, somewhere between a finger and a pinky um, of thickness, about a quarter of an inch of thickness. Um, you don't wanna go too thin uh, because that will make your piece very fragile, but if you go too thick, it will make your piece heavy and kind of clunky to work with. So you'll notice that I'm rolling from one side to the other. I'm doing my best to stay even, but I'm not obsessed with it for this project. I just caught an air bubble. So I'm smoothing that out. If there's an air pocket, you definitely wanna pop it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check my thickness here. So this is perfect. Might even be a little bit thinner than it needs to be but it'll work for me. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use a rib tool. You could use a plastic one, you could use anything that's plastic or metal to compress your clay now. And this also takes off the texture from your cloth if it left a big texture. So I've compressed on that side and I'm gonna do it to this side as well. Now that is gonna make the fabric texture pick up on the on the back side again, but this is not just about um, the texture. It's also about the compression and the smoothness. All right, so now I've done that, and what I can go ahead and do is decide how big I want my piece to be. So I definitely get a ruler out, and you know, look back at some of the cups that you're in your cupboard and think about you know like how wide are they? How tall are they? Um, I have gone and found this Tupperware lid, which is I think four and a half. So this is uh, 
Tupperware lid that's four and a half inches wide, that would be a little bit on the large side. But I think I, I really like a big tea bowl. Um, so I could do that. If you had cookie cutters or cups in your kitchen that were a little bit smaller, you could use that to as a cookie cutter or to trace. Um, I'm gonna go with, I think, a custom size here because I think I like something that's like just a hair smaller. So if you've got cookie cutters, you could use that or a bowl in your kitchen. This one here is like three and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that. I can't fit two out of there. If I could fit two out of there, I would. And I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, and this I can actually use again in just a moment. Um, and I will show you what we do next. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find um, centered on our banding wheel. So this is the banding wheel that we have for our at home time. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and set that down on our table, clean the surface, just wipe it off with some water and dry it. And then center is a very important idea um, because if I took this slab, which is still inside my cookie cutter, and I just put it down anywhere and I started coiling, I would not be able to figure out any kind of symmetry at all. I wouldn't be able to consciously decide to make something symmetrical or not symmetrical. Um, so to give myself that choice, I'm gonna actually take a little trick that involves your arm as a lever on your table and a paintbrush with some slip on it. Okay, so I'm mixing up my slip really nice. And this is kind of a watery slip, um, but I'm mixing it on up and I'm gonna get that in my hand. I'm gonna anchor my elbow against the table and I'm going to start spinning my banding wheel without letting it like glide across the table. You don't want it to move like this when you're doing it, okay? So I'm just gonna move it and I'm gonna, like a record player, just draw myself a line. And you can see that now I've got a perfectly centered circle because I spun it without moving my arm. Let me show you how you can mess that up. So if I didn't anchor my elbow and I tried to draw a straight line, it's not straight and it's not gonna help me put the thing in the middle. Okay, and another thing that I see folks do is like, you know, you might start spinning but then it like moves and then you're like, oh, now I have too many marks and I can't figure out where the middle is, I'll just guess. Wipe it off and try again. It's just slip. Okay, so first I want you to figure out Make yourself a couple lines. So I'm anchoring this on the table, spinning, and I'm drawing a line where I think it probably will go, where I think centered is. Draw one that's just smaller than that as well. And make yourself kind of a bullseye. And you can do this at the beginning of any given day that you're working on it, and that's gonna help you find your placement. Okay, because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look, I'm gonna pop this out and I'm gonna look down at what I've got here and I'm going to place it, just really looking at it from the top, place it where I think it should go. And I'm gonna just gently press it on there. It's a very wet piece of clay today, so I won't need to do anything special, but in the future, you'll be putting a little bit of water or slip under it before you press it on and that's gonna make it stick. But you can actually leave it on here until you're done coiling. All right, so that's how you get it centered um, each day that you're working on the piece. Now we're gonna talk about coils. So I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna take that piece of clay that I was working with. All right, you wanna make sure that your area doesn't have any little chunks or debris. And you're gonna take a good piece of clay. You kinda wanna wedge it a little bit. So I'm kneading this over onto itself to get into any air pockets out. This table is wooden, but it does have sealant on it so it does want to stick you could do it onto your um, cloth or onto your canvas but i'm just kneading this okay and that's a good place to start and i forgot to bring over my tool so i'm going to just kind of sponge with this all right so then i'm going to take that clay in my hands and i'm basically trying to make a snake i'm trying to make a snake noodle so my goal is to make it first look kind of like this. So I'm just doing that in my hands, spinning it and pinching it. Okay, and then I'm gonna move on to rolling it on the table. You really do want your table to be pretty clear. 
Um, so I'll come back in a moment with a clear table.